So now is our usual five layer solve with this. The way that I like to do this is now we get our centers in. And this part's easy. This is a typical way of getting um, five layer centers here. It's not a super cube. And it's the same way. So just to kind of briefly go through that, I've got this over here. And the way that I like to do this is I, I kind of put them in using a layer, a layered approach. So let's see. What's an easy way to show this? So see these two over here? I want them to come over here to create this layer here. So move this here. Bang, I created this. And I use these two layers to put that in. So I move this out into a layer that wasn't moved. Double turn it. And now I just reconstruct it. So now I move this back. Move those two that I put in originally. Move this back here. And move this here. So the overall result is actually I put these in. So now I just have two more to go. And this is going to come to here. So move it in with this middle layer here, creating this layer, turn it to the side, move it, turn it back, undo what I just did. I'm moving fast because if people want to know exactly the details of this, I can tell you, but this is strict center placement. Turn, 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 turn. So bang, we've got this. Ultimately, anytime you're solving a cuboid, it all comes down to reducing this to a three by three by two, which means put all your centers in and do what you gotta do. So anyway, now I have to put these in. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'd love to be able to move this over here, but I'll knock this out. So the way that I do this is I'm going to take this orange, move it into here, kind of making it the same. So turn this here. So now I have these lined up. Now I just have to line this one up. So I double turn it to line this up with this and move it in. So that's how you can bring that back. I'm not putting an algorithm to this because I think you can visualize it. So this green will replace this green, basically taking these, uh, placing these opposite each other. So double turn that here. So this is lined up to be put in from here. This has to be turned so that this blue lines up and double turn. So now we've got all of our centers. Next step is reduction of edges. So I'm going to start off with uh, the yellow side. So let's see what I can do. I've got the, the yellow and orange. Let's go ahead and do that first. Yellow and orange. Better yet, let's do this. Let's do the green and yellow just because it's here and I can see it. So I move it opposite side, move it in like this. Now this is going to be my workspace, so I want to move it out of the workspace. Now that I have that there, let's put in the other red one, which is right over here. So I'll double turn that and move that in. Now notice I'm going to be messing these up a little bit, but that's actually okay for now. All right, now that I have this here, I'm going to move it out of the workspace into here. So turn, 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 turn. Now that I've done that, I'm free to get these back. So I'll just double turn this here, double turn, double turn here. So kind of a convoluted way of doing it, but this is not the challenging part of this. But in any case, this red one is in. Why don't we hit this one here? Because we have two oranges. Just move this out of the way. Where's the other orange? And it is right over here. So let's move this separated from here. So turn, turn, turn. This uh, notion of how to do it with replacement is something that I've gone over before. But anyway, orange and, uh, orange and yellow flips to over here. Bang. Now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this out of the workspace into here but I have to bump this out of the way first. So move this here, then bump it here, turn it back, replace it back. That way these two are back here, and now I'm free to move this guy back in. So now uh, we'll work on this since this is uh, already here. So we're just working on the yellow edges. So let's see if we can find it, and it's right over here. So double turn, turn this in. Now I can't move this into here, right? So I gotta move it over here. So turn, bat it out of the way, move it back, bring it back and move this back. All right, so finally, the green one, which is here, so this is fairly simple. Move this over here. Now I have to move this out of the workspace into here. So I gotta replace it with this, which means I move it over to here to bat this blue one out of the way, double turn it, then I move the blue one back, and move it back in here. Then result is I have all of these guys in. So the next step that I'm gonna do is get the top cross. So I'm gonna move these into place. Move this over here. This has to come down. Well, we'll move this orange one here. Bang. 
Move this one by the blue one. Move this over here. Calmly doing my three by three by two solve. Okay, now that I've done, I've put in the corners, the edges over here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm, I have to get the edges on the top. The way that I do this is I can no longer look at these as edges. I actually look at them as one edge in the middle here and then two corners on either side. Because then what I do is I do a combination of corner swaps and then edge swaps to get it into place. And you see me do this with other five layer cuboids uh, in, in the past. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for one where two corners are in. And if I don't see that, then I have to put them in place. So. Uh, what I can do is, here's the red, where's the other red one that I can put in? And that happens to be way over here. So I want to take this edge on block, on mass, and move it to here. Because when I do that, this red is going to be just next to this here. I can't do the swap over here, that's not going to do any good. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to move this whole edge on mass to here. 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. Now why did I do that? Well I did that because this edge is now over here, so this red can be swapped to here. And that's what I'm going to do. So this is going to swap to over here. Now to do that, that means this is going to be, I'm going to say that this, these two together are the corners. So this is going to be my R piece over here. So I'm going to go to swap these corners. This is my corner swapping algorithm to R U, to R UI, to R, UI, D, 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R. So that brought these two, and then we move this back, that brought these two into here. So now we have two edges, uh, two corners that are in. Now the way this works is either no corners are in, like we had in this case, or all the corners are in, like we don't have in this case, or one of the corners are in. But you should not get a situation where two corners are placed. If you do that, this becomes unsolvable. Um, and I'll tell you why. Why? You really want to know? Oh, wow. She's showing interest. Anyway, what, uh, the reason why this happens, uh, the reason why this is insolvable in this case is let's, let's consider what would happen if I, say, wanted to move these two right next to each other. So I'm, I'm actually going to swap these two edges just to illustrate that. To our U, to our U, to our, to you, to our, to you. 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. Okay, so you can see that these two are next to each other. So the thinking is, well, okay, so I got the orange edge, uh, orange um, corner here. I want it to be over here to match that, so why don't I just do a corner swap where this can come here and this can come here. Well, I don't know if you realize this, but when you do a corner swap like that, it's not just this that comes here and this that comes here. This also swaps. This comes here and this comes here. So what's going to happen is that I'm going to end up with a situation where these two corners are going to be in. They're going to be orange. But then this blue is going to come over here and this red is going to come over here, which will take this away from here. So these two will be in, these two will be in, and these two will be out. So I'm going to forever have a situation where two are in. Another way to look at this is the law of cubes. I cannot just swap these two because according to the law of cubes, you can only swap... Uh, and you can only do an even number swaps. If I swap these two, leaving this where it is and uh, this where it is, I'm only swapping one, which means another one had to swap. Two other pieces had to swap. In this case, it'll be these two and these two. So that's going to be one, oh, yeah, one, two swaps. That's an even, uh, that's an even number. So according to the law of cubes, I cannot just swap these two, which means this is a bona fide parity. It's a parity because when I reduced these down, when I lifted these down here, I put it in a situation that could have never been scrambled if I just started out without the shape-shifted form. So this is an actual parity of reduction that you can see in this case. So how do I get out of this? And this is the final the uh, final battle as to how to do this. And this may be the first time that this technique is being described on YouTube. So here's what I would do to get out of this when, when you get into a situation like this. And it's the same way as with this monster over here. You're going to have a similar situation that happens with that. So how do you get out of that?
So the first step is let's take the corners that are opposite um, and let's actually put in the corners, the two corners that are opposite each other. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it this way because it helps illustrate what I'm talking about. It's easier to visualize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to move this back over here. I'm going to swap these two. And that's for the purposes of basically putting this, uh, putting this in. Actually, so I'm going to take this, put it here, and I'm going to end up with two, with the two oranges. But I don't want to destroy my two reds, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap these two. 2R, U, 2R, U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, U, 2R, U, I, 2R. Now why did I do that? I did that so I can get this red next to this orange. Because now what I'm going to do is take this orange and put it here, and I'll have these two in and these two in, disrupting um, the greens and the um, blues. And I'm doing that just so that I can put these two opposite each other and I'll show you why. So corner swap, 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R, turn, turn, 2R, UI, 2R, U, 2R, turn back. Okay, so I've got these corners in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this these two solved corners opposite each other again. So I'm going to swap these two en masse. So now this is going to be my R. So notice I'm kind of flipping between this being my corner and this being my corner, depending on what I want to swap. So 2R, U, 2R, U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, U, 2R, UI, 2R. All right, the whole point is, is take the two corners that are solved and move them opposite each other. Now let's consider what we want to do in this case. Ultimately, what I want to do is I want to take this green and move it here, and this blue and move it here for the purposes of getting our corners in. But how can I do that? I can't just do one swap. So I'm going to make use of the other aspect of what happens with the Red Bull algorithm. I'm going to do the Red Bull algorithm, which will not only flip this up, but it'll flip this around as well. It'll swap these two corners. So let's go ahead and do the Red Bull algorithm. This is So this is how we get out of it. 2R. Now, I might as well say too, I'm not going to use this as my B yet. I'm going to go right back to using this as my B. And that's because pretty soon I'm going to be bandaging my Fs. So just bear that in mind too. So 2R, what is the R? 2B, 2B, 2U, L, 2 up, RI, 2 up, R, 2-up, 2-f, r, 2-f, li, 2-b, 2-r. So as promised, this was flipped. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this b side with this terminal, uh, this last layer here, and do a 2-b um, over here. Just uh, uh, turn that back here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this green and red and move it into here. The reason why I did that is now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another Red Bull algorithm which will swap these two. So these two are going to be swapped. This will be facing up and this will be facing down. Rather, This green and white will be swapped over here and facing up. This blue and white will be swapped over here and facing down. Now imagine why I did that. I did that because I've got this one facing up. This green and white is going to be up here just to the side of this and then I'll move it in. So we're going to do another Red Bull algorithm to swap these two. 2R, 2B, 2U, L, 2UP, RI, 2UP, R, 2UP, 2F, R, 2F, LI, 2B, 2R. So it did like I promised, this is here, and now I'm going to take this screen and move it over here. So what I've done in essence is I've now lined these two up and these are already lined up. So now after bringing uh, this over, I'm going to do the Red Bull algorithm again, which should bring this back. So 2R, once again you, moving it from here, 2B, 2U, L, 2UP, Ri, 2 up, R, 2 up, 2 F, R, 2 F, L, I, 2 B, 2 R, and you can see we have it back. So basically, 
two corners here, two corners here, and uh, well, this is down over here. So basically this puzzle has been recalibrated. All I have to do now is just put these back in over here. So let's see if I can easily do that. Place this here, here, turn from here, turn here, double turn here, turn here, double turn this back like so, here and here. Pretty tricky, huh? But in any case, it didn't disrupt any of my other things here. So let's go ahead and put our yellow pieces back in. Bring this here and here. This is fine here. And move this yellow and blue here. So looking back here, the end result is we put these corners all back into place. So that is the last of the true challenges with this particular puzzle. But for the sake of finishing the solve, what I'm now going to do is just do a middle swap from here to here. So it's going to be 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. Now notice what that does is that creates this placement issue. And I can deal with that the same way that I deal with all placement issues like this. With that algorithm, what I used to call parity, which is now at this point placement. So holding it over here, 2U, 2R, 2F, like this, 2F, then 2U, then 2F, 2R, 2U, 2F. Puts that back in place, causes this placement issue, so I do the same thing here, 2U, 2R, 2F, 2U, 2F, 2R, 2U, 2F. And, and we're good. So, you know, what that did do is that uh, also flipped these two, which I can easily um, uh, put back in. But actually, come to think of it, I'm just going to turn this over here, double turn, turn this here, double turn, turn this here. What I'm doing is I'm just reassembling the bottom layer here. So, the next step after I've gone through all that rigmarole, did all my placement down here, put all these back in, deal with the uh, parity, unique parity situation of this. Now I'm going to start doing my regular solve over here. Now bear in mind, now that I've got the center portions of my middle uh, layer, I need to start working on these guys at the same time. So what I'm going to want to do, now that I've got these in place, is as I'm putting these edges in, these corners in down here, I want to make sure that I line it up to cause these guys to flip in the proper position. So this is the yellow, green, and orange. So that's going to come over to here. And I'm going to, by flipping this down, it's going to cause these two to flip, which is what I want. This red and blue will be here. This orange and green will be here. And then flip it from here. So this actually is the orange and green. So I'm going to put this right over here. 2R U, 2R UI, 2R. Places this here just fine. And now this is placed a little closer to what we want. So now this is going to come down, but I'm going to coordinate this with this misplaced middle segment here so that these two can now swap. So yellow, red, and green, right over here. 2R U, 2R UI, 2R. So this is in place, and now we have this whole thing, this whole middle layer, exactly what I wanted. So now I just continue to do my solve here. This is my 3x2, 3x3x2 by two, uh, three by three by two solve. This comes down to here, 2R U, 2R UI, 2R. So the bottom layer is now completely solved. I do have a placement issue here, which I'm going to deal with as I deal with the top layer. Same thing. Now these, this whole thing is the edge, and these two become the corners. And I just so happen to have all the corners in. This is the same solve that you've seen, so I'm just going to be doing middle swaps. This whole thing is now the middle. So this will swap with this to put the orange one in. And I'm going to do it in conjunction with the placement issues here. 2R U, 2R U, 2R 2U, 2R 2U, 2R U, 2R UI, 2R. So that's okay. And now we just have to continue to flip flop these guys around. So what I'm doing is adjacent edge swaps. We'll swap these two to get this blue one in. 2R U, 2R U, 2R 2U, 2R 2U, 2R U, 2R UI, 2R. So we're good. And now I just have these two to go, which will get this back in. 2R U, 2R U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, UI, 2R, and lo and behold, you've done it. 
So there, there you have it. The solve of the uh, three by five by five. Very challenging cuboid, very unique in its structure and its potential problems. You're not gonna find this with similar type cuboids. It's just this kind of structure. And the same thing is applied to this guy as well, which I'll be going through just for the sake of it at some point in the future. But that's, uh, that's the method of going through this. And that should guide you through almost any type of cuboid that's out there. So to uh, Dan and Tom, who are responsible for this fantastic puzzle, I say congratulations, good job. And to anyone who wishes to buy this from them, do so. And here's your tutorial on how to do that. So keep them coming. Thanks for watching.